so this is the unboxing of our first booster pump uh, this being commercially made I do believe and this I guess would be the same way you would get it oh it's marked T valve bleeder valve uh, air tech booster pump kit instructions regulator and the booster pump itself So if you folks know that uh, if you really want to work and spend all day in the bush air shooting your air rifle, you got to have a booster pump, especially with the big bores, because you need a way to drain your tank, especially if you're shooting 4,500 PSI is your fill pressure, you know, 4,500 PSI tanks only going to take you so far. I'm using the GoPro here, so hopefully this will Now this is what looks like a standard pump, uh, boosters, whether it's Haskell, Teledyne, or anybody, the big companies. <clears throat> you got a big piston washer in here, and you got a shaft in here. This fills, this area here fills with the air, and as you activate this, the pump, the piston gets pushed forward, and the air that's trapped in this shaft gets squeezed into the air rifle. And it's got a one-way valve so the air can't go backwards. And that's how you're able to drain, you know, like a 3,000 PSI tank. And you can force that air up to 4,500 PSI fill. All right. These both have your 1 8 Foster male nipples. And I believe there's an arrow here showing that that's the out. I believe there's, a, you know, there's again, it's a one-way check valve. So it can only go, the air can only go up. It can't go backwards. So this is the booster pump. This is your, you press to activate. And when you let up, it stops and goes back. Go, stop, go, stop. That is a larger quarter inch quick disconnect because this setup will allow you to use a standard shop compressor to drive it or you can do it as a standalone setup like I have so right now we're just going to unbox everything This is our bleed valve and micro bore hose that presses in. Psst. Psst. 
just like that. Um, it comes, everything comes already assembled, just like you're seeing it. Next box, your T. <laughs> I pity the fool, it's my Mr. T. I'm not too big on unboxing videos, but uh, I thought at least we'd start out with something. Regulator. Okay. Right, this kind of wrapped very nice. regulator <clears throat> now let's put all this together okay now as this diagram number one that we're going to work with we're going to have the source tank for the air to boost into the air rifle and then this, set, this tank will be the drive tank. This will drive the booster pump. Now this setup is designed for 125 PSI to push this piston forwards. So if this is a regular quarter inch chuck setup, uh, if you had a regular household compressor, which I do not, so what we're doing here is we're going to take this spare tank of air. Now, even though I have three or 4,000 PSI in here, this is a reducer regulator. So only 125 PSI is actually coming through. So like if you're set up with just a couple of scuba tanks with 3,000 PSI, you're perfect. All right, so that is set my 125 PSI to push this piston forwards. We have, this is my source tank. We're going to open that. And that air is actually coming through here, filling this golden shaft. And then it's coming up. You can see the air here on this regulator, uh, just at about 3,000 PSI, and then I have it coming through going into the air rifle. So what we have, without doing anything yet, is I've got 3,000 PSI from here, just coming through freely into the air tube. Now what's going to happen is, is when I press down the actuator, if that's the proper term, it's going to allow the 125 PSI to push this big piston forwards and it's going to push a shaft in here it's going to force the air whatever the cubic volume is in here up through into the air tube that's what a booster pump does it just this fills with a little bit of air and it squeezes it into the gun that's why you can use 2000 psi to hit 4500 because you're filling this and squeezing this into here. That's all that's going on. If you can watch this, I don't know if I can hold it and you can see it. When I press, you'll see it go up. 
See, it filled. Now when I release, the air pressure from here pushes backwards. So now we're about 35. Push again. Release. Push again, release. Well, not release yet. Now release. Almost 4,000. Okay, so a little over 4,000 PSI. Press again. And it pushes backwards, it locks and stops. So, what about 4,400 PSI at this point? So, to disassemble, or not disassemble, but to remove, close your feed tank. You're going to hit the bleeder valve, and it's going to blow the air out rather quickly. If I can hold this. Back down to zero. Disconnect, and now you can go shoot. You can do this all day long until these tanks are down to around 1,500, 2,000 PSI. So this is the two-tank setup. Okay. All right, fellas out there in Hollow Point Land, now we're going to do a one tank setup. Okay, so if you've only got one tank, you have to use the T fitting adapter. And what that does is that splits the airflow. So let me get this correct. This fella goes here. This diagram comes here. Air tank. So now the air tank line goes into the T the T splitter. The hose from the T splitter goes to the regulator. All right, and this is kind of how I have my setup on if you've seen my my previous booster video pumps I've got the source tank Connected with a t-splitter and so it splits goes to the regular which again reduces it to 125 to drive the pump and then this goes Still to the air rifle Okay now you can change this around. You can do different, you know, there's different regulators out there. I use an inline regulator that's a little lighter and smaller. Um, you can bolt this to a board. You can make it, you know, travel worthy. It, you can do anything you want, but this gives you the right out of the box setup. And there's extra length on all the hoses. So you can have it in the back of your pickup, your car, whatever your setup is. Everybody has a different way they like doing things. And so I'm just showing you the basics on what it comes with. And then from there, it's up to you on how you want to do things. Um, try to wrap these hoses up so they weren't so goofy looking here in the video, but it doesn't work that well. So we're going to open the source or feed tank. And now this one tank does both it feeds both sides okay which again this both setups are for ha not having a tethered to a shock compressor this is so you can go into the you know out in the field into the woods whatever you're doing wherever you're shooting um you don't have access to have the other stuff you know a regular compressor available the diagrams do show everything in detail Okay, I'm just following right along what's already here. Okay, so this is open. We've got around 2,800 PSI in this tank. 
and we're going to boost this baby up to 4,000 plus. Just press this. And again, it's, it's, it's hard to see because the gauge is, is, is not ginormous like I usually do for my bad vision. But you can see each time it strokes, <laughs> shaft and stroke, <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, it keeps going up. And the one-way check valve prevents the air from backflowing. So that's how it keeps boosting. And then that, that air you hear escaping the vent is the air that the volume that's filled this up is now pushing back. The air has to leave. It has to go somewhere. Boost. Off. And it's backing up. Boost. Off. So we're, the red is the PSI. So we're at around, I'm going to guess and say 4,200 PSI at that point, which is fine for the demonstration. And then we close the valve. And then now we can bleed it. My papers will go everywhere. Disconnect, and now you're ready to go hunting, shooting, or whatever. Super simple setup. Like I said, uh, you can kind of bolt this all together any way you want. Um, as long as it works for you, it's the right way. So now, the last setup, which I unfortunately can't show you, but I will demonstrate. All right, technique number three on using the booster pump. Now, if you have a shock compressor set to 125, you set it like that. You don't need the reducing regulator. Remember, this is only used if you're doing standalone with your scuba tanks or carbon fiber, which we're not using. So you would still have, you don't need the T, Mr. T. I pity the fool who don't use the T. I pity the fool. You would have your source tank. This is the air that's going to be boosted into the air rifle. Your direct connection to the air rifle. And then you would open your source tank. And it would fill, as I said before, uh, whatever is in the tank, around 2,500 PSI, is going to fill in the tube. Then... With your shock compressor being connected, 125 PSI, you press down, it would, it would start the, the drive or the stroke action, the air in your shaft, <laughs> I can't giggle without saying that, would then come up and get forced into the air tube, you know, whatever, let's say 10, 15 cc's cubic inch of air is getting forced up into your tube. And you would just continue to do that until your pressure gauge tells you where you want to be. And once you're done, close your source tank. Release the air. Release the cracker. Unpop it. Now you're ready to go. So I've demonstrated all three, hopefully. Now, big time air gunners. I hope... I've explained how the booster pump works um, to the best of my ability. It's, it's not rocket science. There's an electric. There's no pneumatic action going on here. It's just all air. Air drives the, dry, the big piston, and that pushes, forces the air in the little shaft up into the air rifle. Now, as always, more air is better than less air. So... If you're starting with 4,500 PSI, that's just going to cycle through. You really don't even need to hook it up. You need to, you start using this 
once your air pressure drops. The whole idea is, is to drain your tank before you have to top it off. So if you're going to the paintball store or the dive shop or whatnot, you're paying them $10, $12, to fill your tank. Well, if your tank's already at 3,000 and you're only going up 1,500 PSI, you're kind of wasting your money. So the idea is to drain your tank before you have to top it off, number one. The other idea is you're able to use your air with lower PSI tanks for higher PSI rifles. So if you've got an extreme or carbon fiber with the Texan, which is 36 and a quarter, uh, you know, uh, XP air guns, which is usually 4,000, 4,200, you need more air. And even if you have a carbon fiber tank that does 4,500, if you're filling to 4,500, you're going to two or three fills and now you're down to 4,000. So that's where a booster pump comes in. It lets you hit the peak pressure you want on a regular. Now, if you've got, let's say, your 3,000 PSI Texan bottle or your Korean guns that are only doing, you know, 3K, that's fine. You can still drain your tanks down to 1,500 PSI and still get 3,000 into the gun you're shooting. So it doesn't make a difference whether it's big bore or small bore. The idea is with this setup is you can drain your tanks before you have to refill them. And if you're on the islands which a lot of my friends are, the, the scuba shops won't go past 3,000, 3,200. What are you, you going to do? Well, you can get used scuba tanks all day long, fill them up with your uh, yin-yang home compressor, and with a booster pump, you can be hitting these peak pressures. You've got, you know, your source tank, you got your drive tank, and you can shoot all day long before you got to refill these or go someplace and have them filled up again. And that's the whole point. Um, if you really get inventive, you could daisy chain two or three tanks together. And, you know, using the T setup, that's your one drive for everything. That's kind of what I have on my older booster setup. I got two tanks teed together. And then that goes into the splitter for the reducer and the drive. So... All the pieces are here. Everything's ready to go. Once you've been doing this for a while, you may want to change your regulator. You may want to change your T's. It's all up to you. It's all good. But this way, right out of the box, you can start boosting and have some fun and spend your day shooting instead of having to run back and forth, filling stuff up and topping it off continuously. So any questions you have, feel free to email me, text me, give me a call. I'll do my best. To describe this, but usually all the big technical stuff, you're going to go to the web page, uh, AirTech. I'll have everything in the video. Um, and I said price-wise, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's between 15 and 17. I'm not sure. I know it's a big chunk to bite off, but once you have this, you're never going to get rid of it. And you can rotate air guns like you do underwear. But you never get rid of your source of air. Um, something I'm always sticking to. So with that being said, hopefully this has helped out. And hopefully this is going to fill a lot of need with a lot of air gunners. Okay? So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And I always, I really hope this has been informative and you're getting something out of it. Um, like I said, I'm not selling these. I'm not shilling for somebody uh, this is a new product that's out, and if I believe in it, I'll try to do a video for it and stand behind it. All I can do is show you what I've played with and hope for the best. And I think this is really going to be a positive item out there. So thanks for watching. Now we'll get back to doing some shooting.